In the vast, star-strewn expanses of space, a consortium of civilizations from across the galaxies, known collectively as the Galactic Alliance, faced a monumental crossroads. This alliance, a tapestry of myriad species and cultures, had long stood as a bastion of peace and cooperation in the face of the cosmos's countless dangers. Yet, an unexpected overture from a nascent species on a blue-green planet known as Earth threatened to unravel the delicate fabric of their union. The humans of Earth, having recently ventured beyond their solar confines, extended an olive branch laden with an offer. A proposal for an alliance against a common foe, the Zork, a relentless race of interstellar conquerors known for their merciless onslaughts on civilization after civilization. The Terrans, as they were known in the galactic parlance, offered their advanced technology and burgeoning space fleet in exchange for the Alliance's knowledge, resources, and camaraderie in arms. Across the conference halls of the Galactic Alliance's floating capital, a marvel of engineering orbiting a serene gas giant, debates raged among the representatives. The human's message transmitted across the stars had been clear and laden with urgency, yet it stirred a malix of responses. Some saw in humans potential allies, their spirit and innovation a boon in the looming shadow of the Zork threat. Others, however, harbored deep-seated reservations, wary of the humans' martial prowess and their rapid ascendancy among the stars. Among the most vocal detractors was the delegation from Slaith, a species of serpentine beings renowned for their strategic acumen and not unacquainted with the harsher maneuvers of interstellar diplomacy. Their leader, Seasonth, a figure of imposing stature and scales that shimmered with a metallic sheen, stood before the assembly, his voice a sibilant hiss that echoed through the hall. We refusses the Terran proposal, he declared, the finality in his tone resonating like a death knell. His reasoning was layered with the intricate politics of interspecies alliances and the shadows of past conflicts. To invite the Terrans into our fold is to court the very maelstrom we seek to avoid. Their ambition is veiled not in benevolence but in a thirst for dominion. Shall we open our doors to a race that, even now, stands on the precipice of replicating the very horrors we unite against? The counter-arguments were fervent and impassioned. An envoy from the Aviari, a bird-like species known for their philosophical bent and commitment to the Galactic Charter, rose to challenge Sizenth's assertions. To deny the hand extended in unity, the Aviari delegate trilled, is to weaken ourselves against a common adversary. The Terrans, for all their youth and vigor, bring capabilities that could tip the scales in our favor. Do we not owe it to our peoples to explore every avenue of resistance against the Zork? Yet, the undercurrent of fear and suspicion ran deep. Exacerbated by reports of human skirmishes with other species and their rapid technological advancements, which some perceived as a relentless, almost predatory surge. The humans' military exploits, particularly their surprising victory over a marauding Zork vanguard, were cited both as evidence of their potential as allies and as a harbinger of a future where Earth's ambition could overshadow the collective will of the Alliance. In a series of votes that would ripple through the annals of galactic history, the decision was cast. By a narrow margin, the Alliance chose to refuse Earth's proposal a resolution that sent shockwaves across the stars. Diplomatic channels buzzed with the news, and on Earth the response was a mix of disbelief and a galvanizing call to arms. As the Galactic Alliance braced for the Zork onslaught, Earth stood alone yet unbowed. In the hearts of humanity, the rejection ignited a fiery resolve to prove their worth, not just as warriors in the cosmic theater, but as beings capable of unity, sacrifice, and indomitable spirit. The stage was set for a saga that would test the very fabric of the cosmos, where alliances would be forged and broken, where battles would be waged not just with weapons, but with the very ideals that define civilization in the vast, starry expanse of the universe. In the hushed aftermath of the Galactic Alliance's pivotal decision, the words, We refuse the Terran proposal, reverberated across the stars, echoing through the halls of power on countless worlds. This phrase, a stark repudiation of Earth's overture, became a symbol of a fractured galaxy on the brink of cataclysm. Back on Earth, the news of the rejection arrived like a cosmic thunderclap. The United Terran Command, a conglomerate of Earth's finest minds and military leaders, had gathered in the Situation Room, a place where the fate of humanity was often deliberated under the weight of silence. The room, bathed in the soft glow of holographic displays and the stern faces of Earth's defenders, 
fell into a heavier silence as the transmission from the Galactic Alliance was decrypted and revealed. General Ava Martinez, a figure of both respect and renown within the United Terran Command, broke the silence. The Galactic Alliance has made their stance clear, she stated, her voice a mixture of resolve and a tinge of betrayal. But let this not be the end of our journey among the stars. Let it be the beginning of a new chapter, where humanity stands tall, not as supplicants, but as equals in the galactic theater. The room, once a crucible of anxiety and anticipation, transformed into a forge of determination and strategy. Plans were rapidly devised, not just for defense against the Zork threat, but for a demonstration of Earth's capabilities and resolve. If the Galactic Alliance would not stand with Earth, then Earth would stand alone and unwavering. Meanwhile, across the galaxy, Sisneth of the Slaith, who had played a pivotal role in swaying the Alliance's decision, observed the unfolding events with a cold, analytical eye. The Slith, with their intricate understanding of interstellar dynamics, perceived the Zork menace not just as a military challenge, but as a pivotal factor in the galactic balance of power. Let the Terrans prove their mettle, Shazenth hissed to his council. In their struggle, we shall find the true measure of their spirit and their potential as either allies or adversaries in the eons to come. The rejection, however, did not sow despair among humanity. It kindled a fire. Across Earth and her colonies, Fleets were mobilized, technologies advanced, and a unified front was presented. The Terran spirit, renowned for its resilience and ingenuity, shone brightly against the backdrop of a darkening cosmos. In the depths of space, the Zork Armada, a swarm of ships that blotted out the stars, advanced with relentless hunger, their motives inscrutable, their methods devastating. As they drew nearer, the galaxies held their breath watching as Earth prepared to face what the Galactic Alliance had feared to confront. Unknown to the Alliance and even to many within the Terran ranks, a clandestine arm of the United Terran Command had initiated a daring plan. Operation Starlight, a blend of espionage, diplomacy, and subterfuge, aimed to unravel the Zork's strategies and, if fortune favored the bold, to find potential fractures within the Alliance itself that could be levered in Earth's favor. As fleets converged and battle plans were drawn, the stage was set for a confrontation that would echo through the annals of galactic history. Earth, with its mosaic of cultures and unyielding spirit, would not go quietly into the cosmic night. Instead, it would blaze a trail of defiance and determination, a testament to the indomitable will that had long defined humanity's journey among the stars. As the Zork fleet advanced, its shadow casting a pall over star systems, Earth's response was swift and decisive. The Terran forces, under the unified banner of humanity, launched a series of strategic counteroffensives that stunned both friend and foe across the galaxy. These were not merely battles, they were statements of Earth's resilience and ingenuity. General Martinez, overseeing the operation from the United Terran Command's flagship, the Resolute, coordinated a multifaceted campaign that exploited the Zork's known tactical vulnerabilities. Utilizing a blend of guerrilla tactics, cyber warfare, and advanced propulsion technology, the Terran fleet managed to outmaneuver the seemingly indomitable Zork Armada, delivering strategic blows that halted their advance for the first time in galactic memory. Meanwhile, in the covert shadows of the galactic political theater, Earth's diplomats and spies worked tirelessly. Their mission was to sow seeds of doubt among the members of the Galactic Alliance, to fracture the unity that had led to Earth's rejection. Through clandestine meetings, encrypted messages, and the subtle art of persuasion, they highlighted Earth's unexpected successes against the Zork, suggesting that an alliance with humanity could be the key to galactic survival. Back on the front lines, Captain Elena Mirov, a rising star in the Terran fleet, became a symbol of Earth's defiance. Her daring maneuvers in the skirmish at the Nebula of Shadows not only saved a critical research colony from annihilation, but also demonstrated a novel use of gravitational waves to disrupt Zork communications a tactic that would come to be studied across the galaxy. The Galactic Alliance, meanwhile, found itself in a quagmire of uncertainty. Reports of Earth's victories, though initially met with skepticism, could not be ignored as they accumulated. Civilizations within the Alliance, especially those on the peripheries of Zork aggression, began to question the wisdom of the Alliance's stance on Earth. A schism was forming, with some member species advocating for a reassessment of the Terran proposal while others clung to the old prejudices and fears. 
On a covert mission sanctioned by the highest echelons of the Terran Command, a team of elite operatives embarked on a daring venture to infiltrate a Zork-occupied system. Their goal was to uncover the Zork's strategic plans and, if possible, to discover any weaknesses in their seemingly impenetrable armor. This mission, fraught with danger, promised to shift the balance of power, offering a glimmer of hope in the gathering darkness. As the chapter of galactic history unfolded, Earth's stance shifted from defensive to assertive. The Terran forces, once underestimated, were now recognized as a beacon of resistance against the Zork onslaught. The intrigue within the Galactic Alliance deepened, alliances shifted, and the very fabric of galactic politics began to warp under the strain of war and the rising star of humanity. In this crucible of conflict and diplomacy, the story of Earth and its people evolved from a tale of survival to one of influence, shaping the destiny of the galaxy in ways that would reverberate through the ages. The stage was set for a convergence of forces that would determine not just the fate of Earth, but the future of the Galactic Alliance, and the very concept of unity in the face of existential peril. The galaxy stood on the precipice of a new era, as Earth's defiance against the Zork turned from isolated skirmishes into a full-scale war. The Terran forces, once solitary warriors in the void, found unlikely allies among fringe civilizations of the Galactic Alliance, those who had witnessed Earth's tenacity and were swayed by the undercurrents of change. General Martinez, now a figure of galactic renown, orchestrated a grand strategy that leveraged Earth's technological prowess and the diverse capabilities of their new allies. The Resolute, her flagship, became a symbol of unity and diversity, embodying the potential of cooperation across species and cultures. In the heart of the conflict, Captain Elena Mirov emerged as a hero of the Terran campaign. Her audacious tactics and leadership inspired not only her crew, but also the newly allied forces. The Battle of the Rift, where Mirov's flotilla executed a daring maneuver to collapse a Zork supply conduit, became a turning point, showcasing the strategic depth and courage that had come to define the Terran resistance. Meanwhile, the covert mission to infiltrate Zork territory yielded critical intelligence. The operatives uncovered a weakness in the Zork's reliance on a singular form of communication a vulnerability that, if exploited, could disrupt their cohesion. This information, transmitted at great risk, fueled a bold plan to fracture the Zork's seemingly indomitable front. As the tides of war shifted, the Galactic Alliance's internal divisions deepened. The success of Earth's guerrilla tactics and the bravery of their stand galvanized debates within the Alliance's council chambers. A faction of species, once neutral or indifferent, began advocating for support of Earth, arguing that the Terrans had proven themselves not just as warriors, but as guardians of galactic stability. The climax of the conflict approached, as Terran and allied forces prepared to launch a decisive assault on the Zork's primary command nexus, a bold endeavor that aimed to cripple the invaders' operational capacity. This operation, codenamed Starlight's End, was a gambit of immense risk and potential reward, uniting a mosaic of species in a common cause. In the epic battle that ensued, the combined forces of Earth and its allies clashed with the Zork Armada in a maelstrom of energy and strategy. The Terrans, utilizing the intelligence gleaned from their covert operation, deployed a series of synchronized attacks that disrupted the Zork's communications, sowing chaos among their ranks. Amidst the chaos, a moment of truth emerged as Captain Mirov, piloting her damaged vessel, executed a critical strike against the Zork's command ship a feat that symbolized the turning point of the war. The Zork, their cohesion shattered, retreated in disarray, marking the first major victory against them in galactic history. The aftermath of the battle was a time of reflection and reconstruction. Earth's role in the galaxy had been irrevocably transformed, no longer seen as an upstart civilization, but as a key player in the galactic tapestry. The Galactic Alliance, recognizing the folly of their initial rejection, extended an offer of membership to Earth, acknowledging their crucial contribution to the survival of the galaxy. In the wake of the war, a new spirit of cooperation blossomed. The Alliance, once fractured by skepticism and fear, found renewed purpose in the face of shared adversity. Humanity, with its diverse cultures and indomitable spirit, stood at the forefront of this new chapter, ready to navigate the challenges and opportunities of a galaxy united not by force, but by mutual respect and common endeavor. Thus, 
the war for survival forged a new galactic order, one where the voices of all civilizations, regardless of their power or prestige, were heard and valued. The legacy of Earth's stand, and the alliances it inspired, would resonate through the cosmos, a testament to the enduring power of unity in the face of darkness.